Ladies and gentlemen, Jump Kaisen has just ended. And Sukuna Kaisen is back with another episode of This Isn't Even My Final Form. <laughs> you heard that right. Despite having to face the supposed strongest of all time in Satoru freaking Gojo, consecutively face off against Kashimo to then the entire gang pulling up on him, it's revealed Sukuna wasn't even using his full power. Oh, and yeah, being stabbed to the heart can't kill him. Come on now, doll. But to explain how we got from this to this, we have to continue from chapter 251 with Maki taking Sukuna by surprise, stabbing him in the back. This feat was only possible due to the sheer planning the gang went through. Unlike Kenjaku, this man has four eyes with the reaction speed to fight against lightning itself. Just moments before, Ino and Kusakabe discusses this very game plan, with them waiting outside Uta's domain for his signal, so Maki can enter at the perfect time. Initially, they even wanted to send in Choso, but seeing how domains don't affect Maki because of heavenly restrictions, she was the best weapon, or shall I say assassin in this case. Maki also had one round of fighting against Sukuna, and even though he was weakened, she is somewhat more experienced than everyone else on the team. Plus, let's not forget the one month super training that had, it's no big brainer that every bit of experience against Sukuna counts because the entire sorcerer team is like Yutis's compared to a 1000 year old curse who wasn't even using full power against Satoru freaking Gojo. <laughs> hey, 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 don't get mad at me. I'm not the one who said I'd win. Are you serious right now, bro? They also discuss how Yuta has moved his domain barrier to a good place. And even though they had expected it to break soon, it hasn't so far. However, they predictably jinxed that and Sukuna breaks it apart. Except... He didn't. The falling apart of Yuta's domain was the signal he had to give Maki for the perfect Libe to execute their plan. And boy, does she look badass whilst doing so. However, not before Sukuna decimates Yuji and Yuta, forcing the others to jump in and help them. But our boy Yuji isn't done as he tries to join the battle again and reach Megumi to tell him it's not over just yet. He must have some next level boo deep talk no curse technique ready for this dude because like always the only thing megami is looking forward to is non-existence <laughs> but before yuji can do anything he falls to the ground coughing blood and realizes that using rct constantly in battle he has not managed to heal himself properly after all it's a very complex technique which only a few gifted sorcerers can use and it has only been a month since he unlocked it so yuji using it flawlessly would have been a pure ass pull. However, he still is trying to understand the mechanics of RCT properly. And so, Choso, the best Onichan, comes to his rescue. He guides his little bro to circulate blood to every corner of his body as if he's spreading roots. Choso is literally the only person I know who escaped his fate of joining the Donut Club. And being a master of blood manipulation technique, he is aware of the workings of RCT as it involves the blood vessels so he tells Yuji to imagine completing the outlines of his body with his veins. This mini in battle training arc for Yuji is definitely going to be a fundamental play later on but the one person who's supposed to be the god tear user of RCT you know Utah is out of commission with Rika grabbing him and Ui Ui coming in to save the day by teleporting them away. Yep just as we and Sukuna stated earlier on Mamie's brother was working working overtime to take the bodies of all the sorcerers away. And of course, knowing Maymay, we all know what she was offered. Now with the execution of this perfect, meticulous plan, you would think things are finally looking good for our gang. Nope. Sukun is moving around as though just a few moments ago, he wasn't even stabbed in the heart. This is on top of the fact Narita kun explicitly stated this damage isn't easily to heal compared to other wounds, as the soul splitting katana is a whole different weapon, especially in the hands of someone who knows the shape of the soul as it causes injuries directly to it. Where 
any normal sorcerer would have died and not be able to RCT their way out of this. However, this is Sukuna Kaisen. And guys, he's the real protagonist of this story, with Gege being his number one fan. Since sharing a body, Sukuna has learned how to distinguish the outline of the soul similar to that of Yuji, giving him the means to use RCT on it. The only thing that's stopping or slowing him from doing so is the after effect of Gojo's fight. Now on the surface, this might sound like Gojo actually done something and he wasn't completely useless, but we soon come to find out that this isn't the case. However, remember when I said that Yuji is in his training arc? Well, this revelation of using RCT on the soul gives huge hope for Megami, as the constant damage he received can be reversed. It looks like his life update might just get a bit better. But what we do know for sure is that Sukuna is having fun. Yep, just look at the smile on his face. His BDSM fetish is really highlighted here. In fact, when he tries to grab Maki's soul spitting katana, he gets overpowered. But hey, he's loving it. <laughs> Maki uses the momentum to lift and throw Sukuna away, but he chants to finally use the world cutting slash. He misses. <laughs> yep, remember guys, Sukuna's output has fallen quite a bit, so he has to chant in order to strengthen his attacks, but he tries to secretly attack Maki by whispering. However, this attack fails because Maki just dodges the most powerful strike by Sukuna. This is a huge feat for her, and even if you discount the fact that she had seen this before, the speed needed to dodge this slash is ridiculous, where Maki is easily now over Mark 3 or higher. In fact, this impresses Sukuna to a massive extent as well, making him literally compare Maki to Maharaga. Yes, Sukuna just declared that Maki can sense and see his techniques better than other sorcerers, which also implies Gojo. This effectively established that a fully developed heavenly restriction could be better than the Gojo's clan broken ability, the one that troubled Kenjaku for 1000 years, the six eyes. Gojo can't even rest in death because his biggest hater, Akutomi, keeps downgrading him and making his entire fight irrelevant. Come on, man. But let me actually explain why Maki is able to see, or should I say sense, Sukuna slashes this well. Firstly, we we should remember that she is like an evolved being due to heavenly restriction, wherein every senses of hers is perfected to the highest degree, which includes seeing and feeling. Also her training arc against Naoya after he turned into a cursed spirit unlocks a whole different beast. The double guidance from Daido and Miyu literally made her superhuman. In chapter 195, Maki witnessed up close Daido, a nameless reincarnated swordsman who couldn't even use cursed energy. Despite such a disadvantage, he embodied sheer lethality when he grabbed Maki's katana to the point of instantly scaring everyone else present around him. The way he wielded a katana was just on another level that even Maki hadn't imagined. So this greatly improved her potential of using the soul spitting sword. Moreover, it was her hyperbolic training with Mio that Maki unlocked her full power. I mean, I think they had like a thousand battles or whatnot to the point where she could sense every change in the atmosphere around her, including the most minimal difference in movement and heat. Yep, she could literally see things on a molecular level, which is how she completely overwhelmed No Oya. This is why Sukuna compares fighting Maki to feeling the same as going against Maharaga in the Shibuya incident. She's literally predicting every single movement that he's doing. However, Sukuna's Maharaga comparison might be the most unhinged foreshadowing ever. I mean, he may made a salad out of the strongest shikigami of the 10 shadows in a couple of minutes, let alone the people who were in the area. Even if Maki is seen as a non-living thing in Jujutsu, Sukuna has a specific technique just for such objects, which is imbued in his domain. Also, we already know by now how it goes in fighting Sukuna. 1. New challenger appears. 2. Narrator hypes them up. 3. They wash 15 fingers Sukuna. 4. They get clapped. Yeah,
What's scarier is that despite Maki stabbing his heart, Sukuna is using cursed energy to keep it beating forcibly. This is the same technique he used back in the detention center arc to keep himself alive after pulling out Yuji's heart. Now, I don't know if you lot noticed, but this chapter just gave us two shots of copium for Gojo's return. <gasps> I need my quick inhale. <gasps> yeah, that feels so good. <laughs> Not only did we actually see Oyoi transport Yuta's body whilst he was still alive and breathing, but we also witnessed a mechanism that can keep a sorcerer alive for a longer period of time. I mean, if anyone else could replicate this insane ability, it gotta be Shoko or Gojo. We also know that Gojo had replenished his cursed energy reserve due to Black Flash, so it's not impossible for him to have played this move without Sukuna knowing. And with Utohime's technique, Shoko's RCT ability could go up by a huge huge margin. Moreover, since Gojo has extra reserve of cursed energy in his brain due to fixing it constantly, he just might be alive with the help of Shoko. <sighs> I think I'm done with this copium now. Well, that being said, Maki asks Sukuna if he's really going to pull that risky move whilst fighting her. <laughs> he simply responds, saying he isn't even breaking his sweat. Stop the cap. <laughs> Now, this at face value might seem like Sukuna is selling more gas than Gojo did when he stated he'd win. But in that fight, Sukuna also looked nervous and even the narrator stated so. However, we then came to find out Sukuna wasn't even trying. But it's not just us who are wondering what the hell is up as Hakari comments to Uraome that despite being in his true form, Sukuna is getting slapped and his cursed energy is drying up fast. He even declares that they are winning this battle. But Ure Ome only mocks his false confidence, revealing that Sukuna doesn't even see the lot as a challenge and hence isn't using his true curse energy. Whoa. Remember, this person is not just an ordinary simp. Orame is Sukuna's ride and die, and his cursed energy waves, which are visible in this panel, are enough for Orame to know that Sukuna is barely even trying to fight his opponents. He is literally passing his time because he has no interest in any of them. So even if you take out the impact of Sukuna's battle with Gojo, he's not at his peak. All the sorcerers combined haven't reached anywhere close to how Gojo fought him, and even that that fight bored him. This statement alone tells us the way Sukuna sees the world, as it's nothing more than his playground. For the most powerful curse like Sukuna, his only desire in life is to have fun and live by his instincts, that is, killing whom he wants to and when he wants to. Ever since he reincarnated, he had used and discarded the characters around him, such as Gojo and Megami. When Sukuna first encountered Gojo's technique, he realized that he had not come across it in the Hyan era. But since Gojo was bold enough to claim he was the strongest, along with Sukuna's first encounter with Gojo, with him dodging every single one of his attacks, gave Sukuna a challenge to make this power that Gojo had obsolete. And remember guys, as I said, this is Sukuna Kaizen. So Gegi and the heavens favoring him gifted Sukuna Megami. The moment he saw the 10 shadows technique, he understood that Maharaga's adaptability will be the key in creating a new version of his own technique. And as Gojo implied, even without Maharaga, Sukuna would have beaten him in his Hyan era form. Like four arms, two mouths, domain amplification, <laughs> bada bing bada boom. But even so, the secret behind Sukuna's true power is yet to be revealed, which brings back how he defeated the 20 elite sorcerers, each more powerful than the other, as stated in chapter 237. There's no wonder why Sukuna single-handedly caused so much chaos that he was worshipped like a God. I mean, it makes sense why he keeps telling Yuji. You're boring. Because all the sorcerers are truly like insects to him. He's not afraid of death because unlike others, he has lived his life to the fullest, not regretting any second. Sukuna has unlocked the true meaning of life as Jujutsu Kaisen revolves around gambling. Sukuna likes to gamble over and over and over again, still emerging victorious each time, be it taking over Megami or fighting Gojo. This goes back to how Jujutsu sorcerers never die without regrets. But Sukuna has evolved to a much higher state of being by living as he wants to. Now you lot might be thinking, I remember balls deep if Sukuna keeps getting power 
powerful and stronger and stronger and never reveals his full cards, how will Yuji and the gang defeat him? Well, listen, guys. Everything is a build up to the end game. To follow the Chekhov's gun, the merger must happen. But why would Sukuna even do the merger unless he's bored and realizes these kids are not even a challenge to him? Once he's done playing with them, the next move for him having fun and a true challenge would be Tengen's merger. Once humanity is merged with Tengen, it will create an unimaginable force, an entity that could possibly rival the likes of Sukuna. This is the end game Gege Akutami is trying to plan. Once this creature is brought forth, then possibly Yuji might be able to merge with it as Kinjaku created Yuji for this very purpose. The merger will create an entity with no direction at all, pure chaos. However, if it merges with Yuji, he will be able to direct it and then nurture the power properly. This in turn will complete Kinjaku's dream of creating a new entity that's not like any other. Yuji will succeed where his curse rooms failed. And then the final fight between Yuji Itadori and Sukuna, the king of curses will commence. Yuji will still end up dying hopefully surrounded by his friends including Megami, the one he saves. If you guys want to check out more Peak Fiction, then make sure to check out this next.